Oh, you are still operating this mechanical dino, little kitty. It's well, surely for you, not for someone who assumes it to be real. Wait a minute. This seems like a good topic. What if it was for real? Yes, so in today's episode, let us walk along with these giant creatures and answer an imaginative question. What if dinosaurs never went extinct? Zoom in! Dinosaurs, they ruled the earth around 66 million years ago before a giant asteroid slammed into our planet with a force equivalent to about 10 billion atomic bombs. This explosion caused an estimated 15 billion tons of ash to spread through the atmosphere, hiding the sun for years and making photosynthesis impossible, causing most plants and creatures to perish. Then came an endless winter that saw average temperatures fall by as much as 28 degrees Celsius. These are the conditions that the few miserable creatures that survived the initial impact had to endure, followed by earthquakes, tsunamis, wildfires and massive volcanic eruptions leading to the extinction of nearly 75% of the total species. It is one of those instances where we wonder what if history had taken a different course and that large asteroid that struck the shallow waters of Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula had landed in a deeper part of the ocean. This might have surely allowed the water to absorb some of the force along with its destructive impacts on the atmosphere. Though it still would have caused a lot of species to go extinct, however, there are tiny whiny chances that some of the larger dinosaurs may have survived. So, assuming this scenario and ignoring other catastrophic reasons, let us expand our imagination and ponder what would have happened if dinosaurs and humans coexisted? Well, in that case, it wouldn't have been an easy life for these giant lizards. Yes, that's because humans, though not physically large individually, have shown perseverance in surviving with other intimidating species and in most cases even hunted them to extinction. So, there is a possibility that dinosaurs might have faced the same fate. But considering how intelligent some dinosaurs were, there are chances humans might have domesticated a few smaller species for meat and eggs or agricultural labor. And we would very likely have taken them into our homes as pets like cats and dogs. While the larger species like T-Rex would have been held in a protected reserve like Jurassic Park where we could visit to spot them using cameras and binoculars. Not only that, as we know, in an urban setting, animals that survive and thrive are the ones who eat whatever we throw away and make a house out of the structures we build. So, it would not be surprising to see small omnivorous or predatory theropods scavenging around our garbage cans. Though all these are made-up situations, the matter of fact is that dinosaurs still do exist. Yes, but not in their ferocious giant form. Instead, according to some experts, in the form of birds soaring freely in the sky. Trivia time! Did you know there were more than 700 different species of dinosaurs? Out of them, it is believed 
that the Tyrannosaurus Rex was one of the most ferocious dinosaurs and had the strongest bite of any animal on earth ever. Hope you learned something new today. Until next time, it's me Dr. Binox zooming out. Ah, oh, never mind. To be continued. Well, don't worry, Kitty. Next time we are on the beach, Granny will protect you. Well, luckily, there won't be any need for it, as it's just a fictional show and Musasaurus are already extinct. What if one pops out of nowhere? Well, in that case, let us explore this hypothetical scenario by answering a monstrous question. What if Musasaurus was still alive? Zoom in! Around 82 million to 66 million years ago, during the late Cretaceous period, the oceans around the world were horrified by the presence of reptiles called Musasaurus, who were assumed to be closely related to snakes and monitor lizards. The reason for this terror was their massive size as few species stretched anywhere from 30 to 56 feet, which made them bigger than T-Rex. Not only that, they had powerful tails, long skulls with jaws bearing many conical, slightly recurved teeth set in individual sockets, which enabled them to hunt and swallow other larger creatures including sea turtles, dinosaurs, sharks, and sometimes even smaller species of musasaurs that were no larger than dolphins. Scientists claim that during the Middle Cretaceous period, some species of terrestrial lizard moved back into the water and evolved into this massive musasaurus by the end of this period. But despite being at the peak of the food chain, their species started to go extinct as there was a global drop in sea levels, which changed nutrient patterns and reduced the number of habitats available for Musasaurus to live in. But in the case that Musasaurus was still alive, it would continue to hold the top position in the food chain due to its physical advantages over other marine creatures. This could cause a decline in the population of weaker animals, leading to an imbalanced ecosystem. To survive, other ocean creatures would need to evolve and become faster swimmers or develop better camouflage or protective features to stay safe from Musasaurus. However, not all species may be able to keep up with the pace of evolution, and those that fail to evolve could eventually go extinct, causing a chain reaction as other species that depend on that prey for survival would also suffer. The extinction of certain marine creatures could also impact the livelihoods of fishermen who rely on these fish for their income. This could lead to an increase in the price of fish, making it less affordable for consumers and keeping a large population deprived of needed nutrition. Furthermore, visiting certain beaches may be prohibited due to the presence of this apex predator lurking on top of the water, making swimming in prohibited areas challenging and life-threatening. However, even for Musasaurus, 
life would be difficult as the modern day ocean environment is vastly different from the ocean of the late Cretaceous period. Pollution, climate change and other human induced environmental factors could have significant impact on its health and survival, potentially leading to its extinction sooner or later. Trivia time! Did you know the name Musasaurus comes from the Latin word Musa, which means Muse River? Yes, it is in reference to the area where the first Musasaurus fossils were discovered in the Netherlands. Hope you had fun today. Until next time, it's me, Dr. Binox, zooming out. Don't worry, kitty. Granny isn't scared of giant Musasaurus. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> it's just a tiny brominy blind snake, little kitty. Imagine what would have happened if a Titanoboa was still alive. Titanoboa? Yes, kitty. The legendary Titanoboa is the biggest snake that ever crawled on Earth. Hey, friends, I'm sure you two are curious to know more about these giant creatures called Titanoboa. So, in today's episode, let us explore their existence and answer a terrifying question. What if the Titanoboa didn't go extinct? Zoom in! Around 60 million years ago, in the deep rivers of Colombia, South America, swam the world's giant snake called the Titanoboa. With an estimated length of more than 40 feet and weighing around 1,000 kilograms, these creatures were said to be almost three times the size of the giant anaconda. Experts speculate that it belongs to the snake family called boids, commonly known as boas, which are non-venomous snakes. But despite the lack of venom, the Titanoboa was blessed with sharp teeth that they might use to grab hold of their prey. And it's been said that the teeth can bend like curved hooks sticking into you. The more the prey struggles, the more it gets hooked. Once that happens, these creatures squeeze their prey with all their strength, leading to ischemia within few minutes. Meaning, the blood flow to the heart or the brain is restricted due to pressure, causing a shortage of oxygen and eventually death. Once the prey departs, the fossil records reveal that a titanoboa's lower jaw extends past the back of the skull, giving it a greater scope of movement when opening its mouth, allowing it to consume prey even as large as a human in just one piece. A snake of this size would probably have to eat about 40 kilograms of food every day, which is twice as much as an anaconda. So to fulfill its daily diet needs, the titanoboas probably fed on giant turtles, primitive crocodiles and other giant creatures of its time. This is not good news because it means humans would have been an ideal supplement for them if they would have still roamed around. Yes, if the Titanoboa didn't go extinct, they still would have been swimming in the Amazon River as they move effortlessly in water and prefer a hot, humid jungle region. So, there could be chances of them migrating to Florida, which is humid for the most part of the year. And the presence of alligators, one of Titanoboa's favorite snacks. Or they could have even moved to Asia due to its warmer climate. So, 
anyone going hunting and fishing in these areas was likely to come across the Titanoboa. But there is a good side to it as well. Yes, these giant snakes could have helped maintain the ecological balance by eating animals like pigs, raccoons and other creatures causing trouble due to overpopulation. But these are mere assumptions as unfortunately the Titanoboa went extinct millions of years ago due to climate change. But the terror of other giant snakes still exists as large pythons and anacondas still roam the earth. And do you want to know what would happen if an anaconda gets hold of humans? Trivia time! Did you know the name Titanoboa means Titanic Boa? In 2009, the fossils of 28 individuals of Titanoboa were found in the Sereho formation of the coal mines of Sereho in La Guaria, Colombia. Hope you learned something new in today's episode. Until next time, it's me, Dr. Binox, zooming out. Help! Help! Snake! Help! Uh, never mind. Hey friends, as you can see, this jaw does not belong to any ordinary shark but to the biggest predator that ever swam in the oceans, that is none other than the Megalodon that went extinct ages ago. So in today's episode, let us bring them back and explore a jaw-dropping question. What if? Megalodon sharks never went extinct. Zoom in! Sharks have always captured our imagination due to their dominating nature, sheer power and enormous size. Even a thought of them lurking under the sea is enough to send a shiver down the spine. But what if I tell you these current versions of sharks are nowhere near their ancestral cousin known as the Megalodon, which simply means large tooth. Yes, with around 18 centimeters long teeth and body size three times longer than the great white sharks, these creatures were the largest predators ever to swim under the sea. If you are that big, you need to eat a lot of food. So, Megalodon's menu generally included dolphins, other sharks and even humpback whales. For millions of years, the Megalodon had no match and ruled the oceans. But with time, they completely went extinct 3.6 million years ago and scientists aren't exactly sure why. Some theories suggest that the megalodons were not able to adapt to the changing cooling temperature and perished due to it, while other theory estimates that it went extinct due to decreasing food sources and increasing competition for that food. No matter the reasons behind their extinction, the stories of Megalodon sightings have emerged time after time as some people claim that these giant sharks never went extinct and lurk under the deepest ocean. Well, unfortunately, that's not true at all as in that case, we would have found at least one skeleton by now or we could have at least seen their giant bite marks on other marine species. But we haven't found any evidence to confirm their presence apart from prehistoric teeth 
that explain their past. But for the sake of this video, let us see what would have happened if the Megalodon never went extinct. Well, in that case, swimming in the ocean and around the beach would have been dangerous. Yes, it is estimated that Megalodons ate around 1,100 kg of food each day. So, to fulfill their daily portion, these giant creatures are more likely to attack humans entering their territory. And once you are within the target range, its jaw would span 2.7 by 3.4 meters wide, easily big enough to swallow two adult people side by side. And in case humans decide to abandon swimming, then these giants would have fed on other fishes. Then there'd hardly be enough fish left in the ocean for us. And as we know, the ocean temperature is warming up again. So this climate would have been an ideal environment for megalodons to thrive and reproduce, resulting in increasing their population. And in no time, they would be ruling the oceans once again. Trivia time! Did you know female megalodons may have been about twice as large as the males? Even an infant megalodon was huge, at least 6.6 .6 feet from nose to tail. Hope you learned something mega new today. Until next time, it's me, Dr. Binox, zooming out. No, little kitty, I'm not falling for it again. I know it's you. I'm you. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> you look like a baby saber-toothed tiger, little kitty. <laughs> oh, I so wish they were still alive today. Well, to find out, let's bring back the extinct creature by exploring a wild question. What if saber-toothed tigers didn't go extinct? Zoom in! Around 2.5 million to 10,000 years ago, during the Pleistocene Epoch, in the vast American open forest roamed a fearsome member of the Phalid family, an apex predator called the saber-toothed tiger, scientifically known as Smilodon, which means a double-edged knife. The name Smilodon was given to these prehistoric cats because of their most distinctive feature, their long saber-like canine teeth that can grow up to 11 inches long, which they used for hunting and even help them to take down larger prey. Besides, they were muscular animals with large species weighing between a whopping 485 to 880 pounds and stretching around 175 centimeters from rump to snout. The saber-toothed tiger had short but well-developed limbs with retractable claws, which made them perfectly suited for hunting and wrestling down large prey, climbing trees or digging up burrows of prey. But despite their dominance, these magnificent creatures went extinct around 10,000 years ago during the end of the Pleistocene Epoch, which saw the disappearance of various megafauna and the rise of modern human civilizations. However, let's tickle our imagination and wonder what if, by some twist of fate, the saber-toothed tiger had not faced extinction. Well, in that scenario, saber-toothed tigers would still maintain their top position as apex predators. 
their presence would significantly influence the herbivore populations, forcing other animals to adapt and evolve. We might have observed faster and more agile prey species perfectly equipped to outsmart the relentless pursuit of these formidable saber-toothed titans. Beyond their ecological impact, the presence of saber-toothed tigers would have sparked the imaginations of ancient human civilizations. Fascinating folklore and mythologies would have been created, leaving a lasting impact on our cultural heritage. But as humans and saber-toothed cats targeted similar prey animals, it might have led to a conflict between both species and humans with their superior hunting abilities would have won the battle. This would have made it difficult for these cats to find food, putting their species in danger. So, there are chances, just like the modern-day cats, saber-toothed tigers would have entered human encroachments in search of food, which might lead to retaliation hunting by humans seeking to protect their livestock or out of fear for their safety. Such conflicts could further endanger the survival of these large predators. Not only that, but due to their rarity and distinct features, saber-toothed tigers could have become targets for poaching and the illegal wildlife trade posing a significant threat to their already endangered populations. Therefore, conservation efforts and research would have been undertaken to understand and protect these captivating beasts, seeking to ensure their survival amidst modern challenges. In short, if saber-toothed tigers were still alive today, they would likely be facing similar challenges and threats as other big cat species in the modern world. So, let us learn from our mistakes and take action to save the existing big cats, ensuring a world where these magnificent creatures thrive in their natural homes. Trivia time! Did you know the saber-toothed cat is not closely related to the modern-day tiger or any cats? Yes, while they are all members of the broader cat family, Felidae, saber-toothed cats belong to a different subfamily called Mascheronidae that went extinct. Hope you learned something historic today. Until next time, it's me, Dr. Binox, zooming out. Interesting. What is it? Well, according to this report, scientists are attempting to resurrect the woolly mammoth. <coughs> it leads me to ponder, what if they had survived naturally? Then what? Allow me to explore that by addressing an enduring question. What if mammoths never faced extinction? Zoom in! Once upon a time, in the chilly past, there were colossal creatures known as woolly mammoths. These were massive animals as big as today's African elephants, but are cousins of Asian elephants. The boys of this species could reach heights of around 11.5 feet, and they weighed as much as 9 metric tons which is like having nine small cars stacked on top of each other. The girls weren't as big, but they were still quite hefty, like four cars stacked together. These furry mammoths were perfectly built for the cold weather. They had thick fur and was like a warm blanket, and they had long, curvy tusks that could grow up to 14 feet long. They use these tusks to grab things, protect themselves. And maybe 
even have snowball fights. But guess what? These mammoths weren't alone on their icy adventures. They shared their snowy playground with early humans who used its bones and tusks for making art, tools, homes and even hunted the species for food. Unfortunately, as time passed, the mammoths began to disappear due to multiple reasons, with climate change said to be the co-factor behind their extinction around 4,000 years ago. Today, scientists are trying to bring these ancient giants back to life, like in a magical story. But it's a tricky puzzle and they haven't quite figured it out yet. So, let's use our imagination and wonder what if these gentle giants somehow survived? Well, in case you were expecting to see a giant wonder roaming across the cold tundra region, then hold on, because things would have been quite different. Why? Let me explain. You see, woolly mammoths were like big, furry lawn movers of the Ice Age. They munched on around 500 pounds of flowering plants every day. But as Earth's climate warmed over thousands of years, the landscape changed and the icy places melted and the kinds of plants that mammoths loved to eat became rarer. So, because of the lack of food, mammoths would have become smaller to survive on a lesser diet. And because it is hotter, they might have lost their fur, making them look more like today's elephants. But the most significant threat these mammoth animals would have faced would have been from hunters who could have targeted them for their ivory. Now, Years where we would have to step in as Earth's superheroes to help them survive by demanding legal protection and rules to keep them safe. But even if we had provided them with all the necessary protection, their population would still have been low because mammoths don't reproduce quickly. A mama mammoth takes 15 years to become a grown-up and her pregnancy lasts a jaw-dropping 22 months. But here's the real question. Should we bring them back? Well, we aren't sure about that. However, what we are sure about is we should focus on saving their cousins, the Asian elephants, by protecting their homes and keeping them safe from poachers. If we set aside some parts of our planet just for wildlife, it would be a win-win for everyone, animals and us. It's trivia time! Did you know the woolly mammoth was not the only woolly animal? Yes, the woolly rhinoceros were around at the same time and went extinct around the same time too. Hope you learned something distinct today. Until next time, it's me, Dr. Binox, zooming out. Oh, for whom are you arranging the welcome back party? <laughs> Never mind. No, kitty. Blue whale isn't the right answer. They are the largest sea creature ever, not land animals. Good try, little kitty. But even the mighty elephants aren't the largest creatures to ever walk on the planet. Instead, it's the titanosaur. Well, to know that, let us travel back to the lost world of dinosaurs and learn about Titanosaur, the largest dinosaurs ever. Zoom in! More than 66 million years ago, 
During the Crustaceous period, the earth trembled beneath the colossal steps of some of the largest creatures to ever walk the planet, the Titanosaurs, a type of sauropod dinosaur which includes giant species such as Patagotitan and Argentinosaurus. Believe it or not, these colossal creatures, especially Patagotitan, could reach up to 100 feet in length and stand as tall as a five-story building with a weight of about 70 tons. That's as much as 10 African elephants. These massive bodies were supported by long, sturdy legs and their long necks, which in some cases stretched up to 50 feet long. To support such a massive neck, the titanosaur had a series of elongated cervical vertebrae or neck bones, which allowed it to reach high into the knees to eat vegetation assisted by its peg-like teeth. Titanosaurs also had other interesting adaptations that allowed them to survive in their environment, like their nostrils were located on top of their head, which allowed them to breathe while they had their heads down to graze. With their massive size and impressive strength, Titanosaurs ruled the land for millions of years, roaming the ancient forests and grasslands of the Southern Hemisphere, including what is now South America, Africa and Antarctica. But despite their massive size, these herbivores were slow movers as they took their time foraging for food. This made them a target for many carnivorous dinosaurs like the Gigantosaurus and the Mapusaurus, as well as large crocodiles and predatory birds. But when danger approached, they were not to be underestimated. Their long whip-like tails could deliver a devastating blow to any predator that dared to attack, while their massive bodies covered with rows of bony plates on the dorsal side, provided protection for the herd. All was going well for these gentle giants until about 66 million years ago, when a massive asteroid, estimated to be around 6 miles in diameter, struck the Earth near present-day Mexico, which is believed to cause the extinction of the dinosaurs, including the titanosaurs. But the vital question is, how do we come to know about these giant creatures? Well, we know about titanosaurs from their fossil remains, which have been found all over the world. Yes, and one of the most impressive fossil finds of a titanosaur was discovered in Argentina in 2014, when a local farm worker stumbled on a large piece of a thigh bone. On further investigation by a team of paleontologists, they calculated the animal weighed 77 tons and was around 130 feet in length and 65 feet tall, making it the largest animal to ever walk on Earth. Isn't that impressive, my friends? Trivia time! Did you know the name Titanosaurus means the titanic lizard? Also, the natural enemy of Titanosaurus was Abilisaurus, which looked like a mini T-Rex. Hope you had a ton of fun today. Until next time, it's me, Dr. Binox, zooming out. So, here we go, Granny. Now you can submit the crossword and win prizes. Well, no use of it. The paper turned out to be a year old. Oh, never mind.